Welcome to part 3 of my terrain tutorial. In the last video I showed you two more blending techniques to mix textures. This time I show you how you can combine the techniques you have learned in order to mask even more precisely. We are now starting here again in our node tree which we have built in the last two tutorials. What I'm going to show you this time is that we can build the whole thing in a different way. I want to show you several techniques in this tutorial series so that you know different ways and get a better understanding of the nodes. This technique also gives you a little more control and allows you to work in more detail. First of all, let's put the material output here and just copy the rock wall texture. Let's display it and connect the displacement. This is what our landscape would look like if we only displayed the rock wall texture. What we want now is that the forest ground texture is displayed as well. For this we use the separate XYZ node. This allows us to mask everything up to a certain height on the object. With the color ramp we can control the whole thing more precisely. We need the z-axis for the height. We also have to select object here. And here we can control the mask. We copy the two mix nodes down here. We already know this from the last tutorials. Then we connect both of them to the upper socket. This goes in at the bottom. This one also goes in at the bottom. We display this and connect the displacement here. Then we take the output of this color ramp as a factor. Invert it and we see that we mask according to the height. It doesn't look very good because we see a straight line here. Our real landscape would have more randomness. To distort this boundary a little, we create a noise node here and connect it to the location socket on our mapping node. If we now display this, we have this distortion here. Here we can scale this and you can no longer see a clear line. The whole thing looks much better this way. What we don't want now is that the texture is displayed on the walls. To do this we have to copy these two nodes here. We also used them before to mask the slope. Here we can see the height up to which our texture is displayed. It is displayed where it is white. This means we have to darken the walls. For this we need a mixed color node. Let's drag it here. So this is our base mask. We start with it here. It comes in at the top and should be darkened by what is white in this mask here. If we display this now we can see that this node darkens the walls. We can adjust it here. If we now take this as a factor we have combined these two techniques. We use the height and the slope as our mask for our texture. We need this mask for several textures and to make it clear we create another group. We only need one output. The whole thing here is our mask. We just call it grass. We could go on and on like this and add many textures. Now we want to connect the second texture. We will copy this here. We can connect this one. This is now our mask for the texture and we want to combine it with the grass mask again. To do this we create another mixed color node first. This is our base mask now, so it goes in at the top 
and should be darkened with this mask here. Everything that is darker than this mask should be darkened. So it goes in at the bottom. And now we can also see here, if we display this, that we have combined these two masks again. We have this noise mask, but also the grass mask. Let's put that here. We use the output of this node here as a factor. Let's display that and don't forget the displacement. That comes here. As you can see, we slowly mix our textures together again, layer by layer. In the same way, I now quickly connect the moss. And now we can also see our moss again. To add even more variation to our terrain, we create another texture. We know how to do this from the last tutorials. We now have imported our new rocks texture. Let's just call it rocks. Now we want to paint them again, for example, like in the last video. To do this, we switch back to vertex paint mode and create a new color attribute here, which we call rocks. We use white to paint our terrain. Let's paint here a bit. Now we switch back to object mode and display the shader. Here we create another color attribute node and select the mask that we just painted, rocks. We copy the mix nodes again, connect everything and select the color attribute as a factor. This doesn't look good at first because it doesn't look very natural. We need to combine this mask differently. We grab the color attribute here and copy the noise texture with the color ramp. We also copy the darken node and drag it up here. So, our mask, the color attribute, should be darkened by the noise texture. We then select the result as a factor for the mix shader and the mix color node. If we display this now, we can see that we no longer have such a thick pile of stones. It is now much more realistically integrated into our terrain. The noise node gives us much more variation. I will tidy this up real quick. This is now our second shader for the landscape. I think it looks very good so far. If we want to have more stones distributed, we can switch back to vertex paint mode and simply continue painting on our mask. If we have painted too much, then we can switch to subtract and delete it again. If the texture doesn't match to the others, for example if it is too light or too dark, then we can change it like this. We go into our rocks group here, create an RGB curse node and connect it. This allows us to make the texture lighter or darker. I will show you more options in the next tutorial. If you combine so many textures, you may have errors in your shader. What can happen is that you can see this ugly displacement in some places. You can easily find out the reason for this by deactivating and reactivating the nodes. Here it is the displacement of the moss that caused this. The noise node was set too fine and I just had to play around with the roughness and the details. Next time I will show you how to use groups to easily customize your materials and make them look more realistic. I hope you could learn a few things again and if you want to see more tutorials and animations then follow my channel. See you next time.